Well, hi again, I'm Tim from LICC and we are honoured to be playing a part in the Kingdom Come 10 Days of Prayer initiative. Last night, I rewatched Groundhog Day, a little bit ironically, but also to find a bit of comfort in the love and the humour and transformation, really, of a man who has to live the same day over and over again. But this time I was struck a little bit by a slightly darker tone in the film. What if Groundhog Day is actually a horror movie in disguise? There's one line in the film where Phil Connors, the, the weatherman, the main character, he asks, what would you do if you were stuck in one place and every day was exactly the same and nothing you did mattered? Ouch. It's like reading Ecclesiastes all over again. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher or the weatherman. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Actually, I love Ecclesiastes, and I think there's a brutal honesty in the author's perspective that captures what a lot of us feel from time to time. And you'll know that if you work in ministry. In these lockdown days, that's only been brought more to the surface for me. I'm fighting my to-do list with all my might, trying to accomplish something, anything, that might differentiate today from yesterday or stave off the meaninglessness. But fighting against the to-do list leaves me feeling stressed, guilty for not doing enough, burned out, unable to be present with the people that I live with at the end of each day. Working harder doesn't solve the problem. It actually seems to make it worse. So there must be a better way. And I think there is, and I think we get a glimpse of it in Ecclesiastes. In chapter 3, verse 12 and 13, the author writes, I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live, that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. Could I learn to see each day not as a horror movie, but as a gift of God? Could I reorient my perspective and somehow find satisfaction in both work done and work left undone? That's a question I've been praying into, and I think God has met me in that question. He said to me, there are enough hours in the day for you to do what I want you to do. And that's helped me tremendously. It's quite a liberating thought, but it's also been one of those God truths that has called me deeper still. Each day I've needed to ask God, if you've given me enough hours to do what you want me to do today, what do you want me to do today? And when I pray that in the morning, I find that my perspective starts to change. Because God doesn't seem to value productivity for its own sake, but he does value the kind of work I fill my day with and the way that work is done. As Christians, we believe that wherever our work brings order, provides for others, creates beauty, releases potential, sparks joy, we know that we're doing good work that matters to God. And when we do that work well, we model the character of Jesus, of whom the crowds were overwhelmed with amazement, saying he has done everything well, as we read in Mark's Gospel. Through our work, we become part of the answer to that prayer that his kingdom comes on earth as in heaven, in Nottingham as in heaven. It's that perspective that helps me tap into the gift of God that the author of Ecclesiastes has discovered, to find satisfaction in all my toil. It means when I work in God's way, even if I'm stuck in one place and every day is exactly the same, the things I do still matter because they matter to God. Let me just pray. Father, thank you that this day you have given us the hours to do the things you want us to do. Lord, help us step into that work. Do it well. Do it for the right reasons in a way that honours you and models the life of your son. Lord, your kingdom come on earth, in Nottingham, in our homes, in our churches, as in heaven. Amen.